welcome to today's episode of Frightfully Forgotten. And uh, first of all, what are we drinking today, Justin? Uh, we're drinking uh, a beer that's pretty fitting for the movie that we're going to be doing, actually. Outpost 31 Antarctic Wheat IPA. <laughs> nice. You can get the recipe above. Today we are going to be talking about Horror Express, which came out in 1972. Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee classic. Yeah, you got the, the Lennon-McCartney of the horror world yeah. here, you know, in the day. It also stars uh, Telly Savalas. Kojak, yeah. you know? He made being bald cool. <laughs> you could get one of those 90s hats with the hair at the back. <laughs> So the movie starts out with Christopher Lee's character, uh, Dr. Saxton. They're kind of making a trek in the uh, Manchurian Mountains, and they retrieve a fossil. That's what know. Christopher Lee calls it, a fossil. Yeah, a fossil. Basically, it's this frozen yeti or like a monster or something, you know, yeah, that kind of resembles a man, I guess. Like a missing link, I guess. He boxes it up. He means to put it on the Trans-Siberian Express to transport it back to Europe to study it some more. So while the crate with that fossil is in the train station, they're getting ready to depart, there's, a, I guess, like a thief that starts kind of poking around the box. Christopher Lee is uh, trying to get passage onto the train, right? He runs into Peter Cushing's character, Dr. Wells. There's no more tickets left for the train either, yeah. right? Peter Cushing pulls out his money and starts bribing the guy. Yeah. Eh, and but Christopher Lee freaks out and he's like, <laughs> yeah. he tears apart that guy's <laughs> desk. So, oh. I found you a ticket. <laughs> he plays a real asshole yeah. in this. The thief that's been poking around, now he's dead. And there's that Rasputin type <laughs> guy that's all like hovering over his body and Doing chanting prayers. and everything. And they turn the guy around and he's got white eyes, like just glazed over white. They get going on the train, but everybody seems to be into this box, into this crane. What's in it? Yeah. It's everybody, a fossil! Yeah, it's a fossil. It's just a fossil. A two million year old fossil. Dr. Wells, a Peter Cushing's character, he bribes the porter to check in what's in it. While the porter's looking in, he sees the thing looking back at him with one red eye, and yeah. it's like glowing. His eyes start bleeding. Yeah, and, and he's he kind of gets put in a trance, and his eyes just go glossy white. That's the end of the poor bastard porter. Everybody notices that this porter's missing. They look in the box, and the monster's gone, but the porter's in his place. Yeah. So now that the monster is loose on this train, he picks off a few more victims, which gives Dr. Wells an opportunity to do some autopsies. I found it very bizarre. The first thing he decides to do is saw open the guy's head <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and take the fucking brain out. <laughs> He notices that the brain is smooth. <laughs> and he all taps yeah, on The it? brain is smooth. <laughs> and I guess he is derived from the fact that the brain is smooth, that the person's memories have been all drained from him. So they're actually able to find this monster and, and shoot it down and kill it. And they decided to do an autopsy on the monster. And for some reason, just like the brain, <laughs> they decide to take a look at the eye fluid put under the microscope. They see all these pictures <laughs> the and they're all like kind of sliding <laughs> along they're, they're like, like dry <laughs> all these dinosaurs yeah. oh look a, a pterodactyl yeah, a, a brontosaurus a brontosaurus <laughs> it's like looking at one of those viewfinders those fucking things as a kid <laughs> yeah they come to the conclusion that it's an extraterrestrial being yeah. They came down to Earth millions and millions of years ago, back when the dinosaurs roamed, and took over the body of this thing. Yeah, this yeti thing. And then it froze, and it was preserved. And now that it's melted, it can now jump into a different body. Yeah. So they have to figure out whose body this being is in, and how to get rid of it, and how to basically get home safe. And if you want to see uh, how they do it, or if they do it, you got to finish watching the movie. Yeah. So in this movie, you've got the dream team, right? Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, yeah. you know. We are the dream team! <laughs> <laughs> and I found it very interesting that, you know, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee always play rivals in movies. Yeah. And in this movie, they start off, the rivals within the uh, scientific community. Yeah. Not that one's evil and one is good, like, you know, Dracula and Van Helsing, but they're yeah. still rivals. But they have to team up. They have to work together to defeat this 
thing that they have to fight, right? So it's exactly. kind of nice to see them team up and be on the same side for once. It's something a little different, right? Peter Cushing almost didn't play right. the part either. At the time, his wife had recently died. He did go down, though, to meet the, the team, though, and meet the, the crew. Tell them he, was, he wasn't going to do it. His friend Christopher Lee uh, talked him into it, though. Thankfully for the movie, too, because... It gave extra star power for the movie, right? You see those two names together back in the day, and you you go see the movie. Exactly. Like, I really like the setting of this movie, like the train. It was so, like, upper class. Well, it takes place in 1906, And it makes right? you, so. like, I, I, I was like, I want to go on a train trip and be all classy <laughs> and, like... Eat on the train in the fancy, yeah. like, dining car. And drink brandy yeah. in those giant snifters. Bottle of champagne yeah. and the thing. Like, uh, you could never afford to do that now, that's no, for sure. No, it's so classy and just ritzy <laughs> and like, oh, man. Yeah. If you ride a train now, you'd probably hate it. It wouldn't be, like, a luxurious yeah. experience whatsoever. It cost you a damn fortune. Special effects for this movie are really good for the mm. time, I thought. Like, when the people's eyes are whited out, it looks really good eerie and, and, yeah. and good. He's bleeding from his eyes. It's a very kind of uh, creepy sight. It's yeah. like almost a haunting sight. This missing link yeti thing. Uh, <laughs> it looks really cool. I like when his arm reaches yeah. out and starts touching all the chains and the yeah. lock. Uh, he picks the he lock picks too. The lock, yeah. <laughs> how does he know how to pick a lock? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's one thing about this movie is the science behind it is pretty hokey, you know, like yeah. looking in the slide and seeing these pictures of, <laughs> yeah. of the earth and these dinosaurs. <laughs> A pterodactyl. Yeah. So that part of the movie doesn't really stand the test of time so much. The music, too. Yeah. Is is excellent in this movie. It underscores everything, right? Very 70s. <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of the Omega Man yeah. or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that super spit up. <laughs> the beginning theme, it's got that mystery feel yeah. to it. Yeah. And um, it kind of, you know, harks to like Murder on the Orient Express, right? Yeah. In these early 70s movies, you don't really hear that overdrive guitar. Like you hear yeah. a lot of the wah wah, the. <laughs> you don't hear like a damn. Yeah. In this movie, like, whenever something kind of scary is happening, there's this damn, this big fucking, like, Black Sabbath style almost. <laughs> and you don't really hear that in, in these movies. It's more no. of the funky guitar instead of, like, the heavy metal guitar. Oh, I like okay, the yeah. fact that um, they have real Asians playing Asians in this right? movie. None of this Charlie Chan yeah. shit. The movie is fashioned on who goes there, right? If, if you don't know, uh, who goes there was the story that The Thing was based off of. Pretty blatantly, this movie is based on that story, too. Yeah, even though they might not say it. Right? Yeah. You know, if you like The Thing, you definitely have to watch this movie because it is uh, a precursor to yeah. The Thing. It could even be, like, a prequel to yeah. The Thing. It totally could be a prequel to The Thing. Yeah, where, where does it go? And it's in the... Sort of in Russia, yeah. could be close to the north, Antarctica, or you know, yeah. not Antarctica exactly, but... If you like Hammer films, if you like the Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee combo, right, this is a one of their probably better ones, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, oh yeah, it's very enjoyable. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please watch Horror Express from 1972. I believe it's public domain, so... Download it all you want. And you have no excuses not to watch it. It's legal.